Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to talk about cardiogenic shock. We're going to discuss the actual physiologic problem, causes, expected changes in a variety of parameters that you can already see written out here on the screen, and what we can do about it. My goal for this and all shock videos is to ensure that if you, the viewer, understands the main problem and the mechanisms by which the body tries to compensate, you won't need to necessarily memorize these parameters, but rather just by thinking about it easily make sense of it in the future. So I've drawn the diagram I'll use for all my shock videos. We have the heart, we have the arterial system, which gets blood to the tissue. We have the venous system, which returns blood to the heart. And then we have the nervous system, which innervates these systems together. In this video, we're going to focus on the heart here, as this is where the primary problem is, hence the name cardiogenic shock. So in cardiogenic shock, the patient is having problems pumping blood out. Pumping blood out. Now this can be caused for a number of reasons, including history of myocardial infarction, which makes part of the myocardium that's either stunned or dead, unable to participate in the actual squeezing of blood. It can happen in cardiomyopathies, in which the heart is dilated or unable to properly bounce back to help pump blood. Myocarditis, in which the heart tissue is inflamed, or certain medication overdoses or toxicities, such as beta blockers. Now, that's a different mechanism, in which case contractility of the heart is maintained, but the heart can't beat fast enough or at an appropriate speed in order to have appropriate output. At the end of the day, pumping blood out ends up being the problem. And so if you were to just think about it in a more relatable term, anything that messes with your heart's ability to beat normally will or can cause cardiogenic shock. So in cardiogenic shock, the blood can't move forward into the arterial system, and that's the overarching problem. And it's this problem that will explain the changes in physiology we're going to describe in our chart. So for starters, ejection fraction is either down or it's nothing if we're looking at a heart rate issue. But in this case, we're going to talk about post-MI, uh, and our ejection fraction is decreased because your heart simply can't squeeze that much blood out. As a result, your cardiac output overall goes down. But remember, and we're going to see this in all of our shock videos, cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. And if our stroke volume goes down, which it does because our heart can't pump, our heart rate then is going to increase in order to try and compensate. Or in the case of a cardiogenic shock as a result of, say, beta blocker toxicity, it actually can't increase. And all of this is in order to compensate and maintain adequate tissue perfusion. But as we discussed, things like beta blockers, which slow the heart, or if the heart is the rate limiting factor leading to shock, you know, like I said, it may also not change or it might even go down the heart rate. So overall, like I said, cardiac output goes down here. Heart rate may increase, especially if it's an ejection fraction issue, or it will do nothing. Now, our SVR is going to go up, and again, this is going to come up in our videos. Remember that resistance is equal to resistivity times the length of the tubing over the area. And so as our blood vessels constrict, the area of them goes down, leading to an increase in resistance. So vasoconstriction or arterial constriction leads to an increase in our systemic vascular resistance. And I'm sorry, this symbol here is the... Uh, Greek letter rho. So again, if the area goes down, your resistance goes up. Now our left atrial capillary wedge pressure will go up and our right atrial or our central venous pressure will go up. And the reason is if we're looking at this box as our heart, and this here is our left ventricular outflow tract, that's you know our aorta here. And blood is able, uh, we'll, put, we'll put this to the lungs, and we'll say this goes back to the right side of the heart, and our lungs are up here to oxygenate. So the other thing that's going to happen is our, our left atrial, or our capillary wedge pressure, and our right atrial, or our central venous pressures, are also going to go up. And so if we look at a diagram of our heart here, kind of like this, with this being our left ventricle and our right ventricle and our right atrium, and this will be our aorta for the diagram, and this will be oxygenated blood coming from the lungs, 
to the right atrium or left atrium and this will be coming from the right ventricle to the lungs up here as blood is having trouble being pumped out to the aorta blood is going to go ahead and back up and back up and back up all the way into the left atrium all the way back into the pulmonary vessels all the way back into the right ventricle all the way back into the right atrium and eventually back into our great vessels and this is what leads to our increase in our capillary wedge pressure and our central venous pressure so let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff over here and now it's important that we discuss uh, the symptoms uh, let me go ahead and write symptoms so aside from the obvious, you know, end organ damage, cardiogenic shock may be identified clinically by a severe drop in blood pressure, as all other shocks, crackles on long auscultation as fluid begins to back up into the uh, left atrial system, then back into the pulmonary system, and the increased hydrostatic pressure forces it into the lungs. Uh, you may also have an increased jugular venous distension in the neck because as blood moves into the central venous system in your SVC and such, it'll cause increased bulging of the jugular vein. And that's due to the chronic back pressure. Treatment, on the other hand, depends on the etiology. Pumping blood in atropic agents may be helpful. such as dobutamine, but you also ha may have patients that go on an intraaortic balloon pump or an LVAD, each of which will get their own video in the future. Be cautious hydrating these patients too much as it can make their situation worse. But some patients may need the antidote to whatever the cardiac toxic agent is. Another thing to keep in mind. So that's all for cardiogenic shock. I hope this was clear and simple. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or are interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video.